Agriculture is the number one industry within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and the horse racing industry is a huge part of that. A horse that's made it to the racetrack and runs maybe costs twenty-five or thirty thousand a year. Between the vet, the blacksmith, the training fees, rider fees, and such. Our study indicated the horse industry to Pennsylvania was worth $10 billion. That's divided into direct cost of the horse industry, salaries, taxes, land, fencing, equipment, trucks and trailers. And then there's a secondary effect, tires, tractors, the hay and grain purchased for the horses. We probably have between three and 400 people here. You're talking about veterinarians, you're talking about hot walkers, exercise boys, you're talking about farriers, you're talking about the guy that grows the hay and the straw that bed these horses down and the feed that we feed them. You can watch a two-minute race, and you if you saw what all went into a two-minute race, you would be just staggered how much time and effort it took to get that horse to the starting gate, go around the track. My help gets there extremely early. I think my first man shows up about quarter to four. I get to the barn about 25 minutes to six. You clean up their stall, much like changing a diaper. And then you take them out for their morning exercise, and you make sure they have fresh bedding. Then you have to feed them in the afternoon and feed them in the evening. They become part of you. You developed a bond, a rapport with them. When you have racehorses and thoroughbreds being bred, raced, raised in Pennsylvania, it's a quality life. Horses have been contributing to the quality of life in Pennsylvania for more than 300 years. Today, that resonance resounds on the Commonwealth's 3,000 horse farms. I would tell you that the Pennsylvania horse has become immensely attractive. There are so many people trying to buy them. Nationally, and for the past two decades, thoroughbred horse racing has seen a continual drop in the number of foals born each year, except in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has been a, a bright spot in terms of uh, the number of registered foals. Pennsylvania has managed to go in the opposite direction. The number of registered thoroughbred foals is on a upward trend. Pennsylvania has three thoroughbred racetracks. The state also has one of the best vet schools in the United States. Pennsylvania has a number of farms that have been in the same family for many generations. You have excellent farmland. You have a tradition of horsemanship, and so you have an infrastructure which enables an industry to sustain itself. So that's a very important part of the equation when somebody's looking at where they want to locate their horses to train or where they want to, where if they want to breed horses. On the inside, it's Seagal who breaks quickly. I believe that the Mid-Atlantic area is the most competitive area for both horse racing and for attracting owners and trainers. You have California, you have Florida, you have Kentucky, but you don't have a cluster of states that have horse racing competing with each other. You have Maryland, you have West Virginia, you have Delaware, you have New Jersey, you have Pennsylvania, and you have New York. Hammering Buckeye now puts a neck in front. Act 71 was the legislation to allow slot machine or electronic gaming in the state of Pennsylvania with the proviso understanding 
that a share of the revenues generated by the slot machines would go back into the equine industries, both research and racing and breeding. We had neighbors to the south, Delaware and Charlestown, that had alternative gaming. They had slot machines. And I don't care what business you're in, if you're at a competitive disadvantage because you don't have the 100 or 150 million dollars of revenues that are generated from an activity that another jurisdiction has, you can't compete. You only get the run of horse so many times in a year, and as a result, you were, you were losing some of your higher level horses, trainers, jockeys, and owners. Again, if you started to lose that to other states, that all of that went with it. What the slots legislation did was increase the purse accounts and the breeding fund, which rewards those directly invested in it, uh, the owners and trainers and, and breeders of the horses that compete uh, throughout the year at Pennsylvania racetracks. Additionally, we saw substantial capital improvements. Racetracks were torn down, as was the case here at Penn National. We had a new racetrack built in Erie, and Philadelphia Park, which is now renamed as Parks, went through a complete transformation. The legislation provided that there be specific investment in the backside, where the people work and train these horses each day. There were those that felt that an expansion of gaming was perhaps an affront to people's moral compasses. But I think that commitment to agriculture and that understanding uh, of the role that horse racing and breeding played, uh, that won the day. Here comes Seagata Louie and two brash, two brash on the outside. Seagata Louie between horses, toes two, and get the wire together. We're the only state out of 50 states that have a horse on our flag. Whomever came up with that design was very well aware of, of the tie of the horse to Pennsylvanians and agriculture. Because of the tie that it has to agriculture in the state, a lot of people realize this is important. This is not something to squander.